What is going on everybody and welcome to the channel. Hope all is well with each and every one of you. As you can see, we've got everything we need in front of me to build a $500 gaming rig. So today's tech unboxing is going to be slightly different and we're going to kind of change that into like an ultimate unbox as we of course unbox and install each one of these parts. So in today's video, we're going to go through and show you a step-by-step -step instructions on how to build your very own gaming rig. Now, if you are new to PC building or you just need a quick refresher, this video is going to be perfect for you. And although we are going to be building a AMD Ryzen platform today, you can take like 95% of the steps that I'm going to show you today and apply them to an Intel build as well. Now, keep in mind, everything you see here, this does not include a copy of Windows. I'm already going to assume that you have a method to either download download Windows or to download and install your choice of operating system for your build. Just a few quick tips before we get started is you're going to want to give yourself some space. So as uh, as you could probably see, I'm on a big desk here so I can move things around and spread out all of the different components to where I can grab them very easily. But you'll also notice that I have my motherboard outside of its bag and just kind of sitting here ready to go. But at the same time, I've also got some of the stuff that comes with the motherboard for easy access, such as my SATA cables, my IO shield. If you have M.2 drives, you'll want to have those little screws out ready to install your storage drives there. But most importantly, because every motherboard is different and there's going to be certain steps that I go through that are going to slightly differ from yours. You're going to want to have your manual on hand in order to consult in case you need to take a look for such as like memory or for your front panel pins and we'll kind of get into those when we reach that specific step. So you want to keep your manual on hand. As far as tools go, a lot of cases advertise that they are toolless, but you're gonna want to have at least a Phillips screwdriver on hand because you're still going to need to mount the motherboard or various components inside the case, and most of the time it's going to take a Phillips screwdriver. So if you can, find a really long Phillips screwdriver, one with a magnetic tip if you do, just to make your life a little bit easier. That way it'll hold on to those screws when you're trying to reach in specific places, or really hard to reach places, you don't end up dropping the screw and make it a little bit harder to grab. Also, when we get to the cable management section of the video, you're going to want to have either some zip ties, some motherboards uh, or cases come with zip ties. But if you do have some extras, I've got some Velcro straps, as you can see right here. This will come in really handy when it comes to going through and making sure that my cable management is nice and clean. Those are just a few tips that I like to do before I start any type of build progress. They may work for you, they may not, but that's just personal preference. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the build. The first step that I like to take when starting a build is putting the CPU in first, just because installing the CPU you getting the thermal paste on there getting the cooler on there is a lot easier to do when you don't have to work with it with inside the case so I've got the motherboard here you will want to have it on a flat surface just because when we install the CPU and we and we press this lever down here it's going to put a little bit of force on it and you want to kind of have it on a flat surface so you don't worry about cracking the board or anything like that so as you can see I have the anti-static bag underneath but I also have a little foam pad that came with the motherboard that I have it resting on to kind of help kind of buffer some of that pressure so we've got the motherboard here you're going to want to go ahead and take out your cpu out of its box so again today we're doing the ryzen 3 we're going to be installing the stock cooler which you can see right here and then of course we've got the cpu within its little uh, little box as well so again when we take this out careful not to touch the contacts or the top you're going to want to try to grab the cpu from the side they do make little indentations in the packaging to make that easy to do now the next thing to take note is there's going to be a triangle on the cpu let me see if i can show you guys there's a gold triangle on the cpu that's going to match a triangle on your actual socket. That is where you're going to line up the processor. So before we do that, what we're gonna want to do is take this little lever and we're gonna move it to the 90 degree position and that's going to open up the socket in order to accept the CPU. So now we're gonna take the CPU and we're gonna open up the packaging. Again, grab the sides right here and however yours orients, you're going to orient the gold triangle with the triangle on your socket. So we'll go ahead and line those up very carefully and then drop that into place. Now, you're gonna want to make sure that it's sitting nice and level and nice and snug. So what I want you to do is don't necessarily press down very hard because you don't wanna bend the pins that are on the underside of the CPU, but you're gonna wanna make sure that it's a nice fit. So if you if you can see, it's, it's very nice and level and just kinda of wiggle it around and make sure that it feels like it's nice and secure. Once you feel like it's nice and secure and level, go ahead and take the lever that we just raised and go ahead and put it back into its resting position there is going to be a little bit of resistance. Don't worry about that. Just go ahead and continue pressing until that bar locks underneath the tab 
right there. Once that is in the resting position, the CPU is now installed and you're ready to put either the thermal paste on it or if you're going to use the thermal paste that's already on your cooler, now is the time that you're going to install your cooler. As you can see, I now have those brackets removed and then I did wipe down the thermal paste that was pre-existing on this cooler. So now we're going to apply some thermal paste and then we're gonna take this and we're gonna secure the cooler on top of that. Now, there's typically two ways that you can do this to install or to apply some thermal paste. People usually put a little small dab in the middle and then press and then install the cooler and it distributes that way or others will actually use the little spatula that comes with it after they've applied to it and kind of spread it around a little bit. I don't know if there's any right or wrong answer. I've always used the bead method to where you just put it right in the center and then let the cooler press it down and compress it. So that's the method that we're gonna be using today. So again, grab your thermal paste, go ahead and remove the cap, and you're gonna to want to apply it nearly right here in the center, and you're gonna to want to do about a little less than the size of a P, and then you're gonna leave it right there in the middle. So we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of a P size in there. And you can see that it's right there in the center and then you're gonna to want to um, just cap off your thermal paste again just so it doesn't dry out. And then you can see that it's right here in the center. We're gonna take the CPU cooler and then we're going to put it on here and it's going to compress that and spread it out evenly across the actual CPU. Now before we install the cooler, there's a few things that you need to take note. Because every cooler and every motherboard is different, you will want to consult your cooler's manual just to make sure that you're using the correct bracket because you may need to go in and remove the bracket on the back of the motherboard here and replace it with a completely different bracket. So what I want you to do is I want you to go through, read your manual, figure out which bracket you're going to need, which socket you have, and then you're going to want to follow the instructions of installing your cooler for that bracket. So again, because today we're using the stock cooler that comes with the Ryzen CPU, it will work perfectly fine with the bracket that we currently have on there. I just had to remove the stock brackets that were on the motherboard. Now, another thing to note is what the purpose of the thermal paste is, is even though the surface of your CPU and the surface of your cooler look completely flat, microscopically they're not and they do have some channels or grooves. What it will do is it will fill in the blanks and allow the best heat dissipation and contact between the cooler and your CPU. So this time I'm gonna go ahead and leave you with yours. Remember again, consult your manual of your cooler, double check with the motherboard's manual just to make sure that you're matching up your socket and your CPU type with the cooler's bracket. And then have that installed, come back and we'll continue the process. In the meantime, I'm going to install the stock cooler on this board. Another thing to take note before you install your cooler is make sure that it's not going to interfere or cover up with the RAM slot. In this case, it did. So what I'm actually going to do, instead of taking the whole thing back off and rotating it 180 degrees, I'm actually just gonna take off the fan portion and rotate that. The AMD logo or this little protruding edge right here no longer is going to affect uh, me placing the memory modules or the RAM slots in those RAMs. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to just kind of orient this cable around some of the components and then plug it directly into the CPU fan slot or the CPU fan header that I've got right there. And with that, you have successfully installed your CPU cooler. The next step of our build process is to install our RAM stick modules. And if you're unfamiliar with what RAM is, it stands for random access memory. And it's just memory that your computer will use to store random pieces of information that it can grab very, really quickly at a later time. So a good analogy that I like to use for this stuff is the amount of RAM you have is like the size of a desk. The more RAM you have, the bigger the desk and allows you to put more random things around your desk in order to gain access to them very quickly. Same thing for the RAM. Now, most motherboards nowadays will support a dual channel architecture versus a single, which more or less allows you to double your data throughput for the RAM. So imagine a single lane highway versus a dual lane highway. Dual lane highway, of course, is gonna be able to flow more traffic. Same scenario for the actual RAM slot. Normally on some of the higher end boards, you're gonna have color coding to indicate which channels are which. So if your board is color coded, you will want to install these sticks in the same color uh, slots. In this case, all of the slots on this board are black, so we're going to consult the manual or this piece of paper that they sent us that indicates which channels are which. So we've got the CPU here, and then moving across, we've got A1, A2, B1, B2. This can still get a little bit confusing, so what we're actually going to do is we want to pay attention to the number. So for channel one, we're gonna to want to install a RAM slot or a RAM stick in A1, 
and then we're gonna install the second one in B1 since one and one is one channel and then A2 and B2 are the second channel. So again, consult your motherboard's manual just to verify that that is the case for your board just because every board is different. But for this particular board, we're gonna be installing in the first slot and then the, the third slot, which is still a pretty common installation configuration. Now that we have determined what slots that the RAM sticks are gonna go in, we want to go ahead and prepare those slots. So what we're gonna do is if you'll notice on the motherboard, it has little clips on these slots that need to be opened up. So some other boards have two of them where you'll need to open up both of them. This board only has one side and it just rests under the other two over here. So what we're gonna do is we know a stick is going to go in RAM one or slot one. So we're gonna go ahead and open up that one to the open position. And then we know the second RAM module is gonna go in the third slot. So we're gonna go ahead and flip that one open as well. So again, if you do have a board that's got clips on both sides, you will want to make sure that both sides are in the rest in the opening position. So what we're gonna do is now that we've got those prepared, we're gonna go ahead and open up the RAM. Again, you don't want to touch the contacts or the gold contacts as much as possible, but they do make it really easy, giving you a little bit of extra space in order to grab the heat sink on these sticks. So what we're gonna do is now these are the same kit. So it doesn't matter which one we grab first. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab the top one. In this case, I did have to push from the other side to kind of get it to unlock. Now, you'll notice that that there's a little key, there's a little slot right there, and you're gonna want to match that slot with the key or the slot that's on the actual RAM slot. So in this case, we can see that one side of the contacts is longer than the other, so we're gonna match that on the slot. So we're gonna go ahead and you can see right there, it's all lined up. Once you've got it lined up, just go ahead and press down firmly and you should hear some audible clicks and you can see that the one clip ended up moving back into the resting position, indicating that that RAM is now successfully installed. Now you're gonna rinse and repeat that same process with the second RAM module or however many modules that you have. So again, we've got the second module here, we've got the short side over here, the long side over here, and we're just going to place in there and then press firmly down again and you can hear the audible clicks indicating that that one is now seated correctly too. So now you've just successfully installed your RAM and you're ready to move on. The next step that I like to do is go through and prepare your case in order to in accept the installation of the motherboard. So of course you're gonna need to remove one to access the area, but I also really like to remove the other one, the other panel, just so we can actually route our cables as we need to. And then of course, once you open up your case, you're probably gonna have a bag that I now currently have spread out all over the desk, but this bag is gonna contain probably a bunch of zip ties and it's gonna contain the posts or if you already have a case that has the posts already installed, great. What you'll want to do is just verify that those posts are installed in the right area for the type of form factor that your motherboard is. So in this case, you can see I am using a micro ATX. So I would want to put a post anywhere that there is an M, but also that matches the motherboard area. So you can see that there's little holes in the motherboard that we're going to use to secure the motherboard down. You've got one here, we've got one here, and so on and so forth. So you're gonna to want to match those holes with the posts of the case in order to secure it properly. So in this case, I ran into an issue where I had, I took all of the posts that they had given me and I installed them in areas with the letter M. The only issue that I ran into was this letter M right here was not actually needed for my board, so I ended up moving that post from here over to here. So now if you have a case that the posts are already installed, perfect, just verify that they're in the correct locations. But if they are not, and you have to install them yourself, you're typically gonna get a little tool that looks like this, that's got a Phillips head screwdriver on the top, but it also has a hex fitting on the bottom. What this does is this allows you to take the threads, you can see the threads right here that will thread into the motherboard or into the case tray, but also on the side, you've got a hex format that will fit into this tool. And you can see that this is going to be the tool that you'll use to tighten those posts. So go ahead and go through, find out where you need to put all of your posts if they're not already pre-installed. And again, if they are pre-installed, just verify that they are in the correct location. I verified that I have all of mine in the correct location and I currently have all of the posts that they have sent me. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this tool and I'm just gonna start here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and secure them. 
until they're nice and snug. You don't want to over crank them because you don't want to strip them. You do need these posts in order to keep your motherboard secure. So just go through and make sure that they're nice and snug, but that you're not going to ruin the threads. Once you have all of your posts installed, we're then one step closer to installing the motherboard. Next step is to go ahead and locate your motherboard's IO shield. And this is going to serve three different purposes. We talked briefly about this or what it looked like earlier in the video. But first off, since it does match all of the connections, if we grab the motherboard, you can see that it matches the connections on the back, giving it a nice clean look. So first, it's going to be aesthetics. You don't have a big gaping hole in the back of your case here where the motherboard's going to mount. Second thing is, is because it metal, it's metal, it does help prevent or helps minimize any type of electromagnetic interference going in and out of the case. Of course, it also helps control airflow because if you have a big gaping hole in the back of the case, your airflow, air is gonna take the path of least resistance. So having this back there and blocking that is going to allow better control of the airflow in the case. So what you're gonna to want to do is you're gonna go ahead and take this. Now take your motherboard and gently, what I like to do, just gently place it in there and kind of orient the IO shield to how the connections are on your motherboard. Once you have a good understanding of how it's going to fit in, you're then going to take the IO shield. If you'll notice, it looks like there's kind of like some metal lips on there. This is going to basically go just like this, but on the inside of the case. So what you're gonna to want to do is come around And you're gonna to want to click this IO shield into place, like so. Now when you install the motherboard, you'll have a nice clean look and you can see that there's little metal tabs right here. These will help press up against the motherboard, allowing this to have a nice flush look. So if we tilt the case back down, might be a little hard to see, but on the inside there, you can see the IO shield. Then if we take the motherboard and pay attention to some of these posts, because some of these posts have a little lip that allow you to lock the motherboard in place, which will allow you to keep it there while you secure some of the other screws. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna just gently grab the motherboard and we're gonna line up the IO shield with the motherboard. But we're also gonna to want to gently line it up with the posts that are installed on the case. So you can see right here, this post right here had that little lip and it allowed it to go through just slightly through the motherboard in order to give it a nice resting feel. That way we didn't have to put constant pressure on this thing in order to secure the other screws. Now, since we have the motherboard resting in here, you're gonna have a bunch of screws that look very similar to this that came with your case that we're going to use to go around and actually secure the board to the case. So you have a bunch, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a bunch here to show you. So you can see we've got a handful of those same screws that we're gonna use to secure the board. So I'm just gonna go around and start screwing the board in. Again, tighten to where they're nice and snug, but don't tighten to where you're going to feel like they're going to actually strip the posts. It looks like in this case, it's gonna be just a few turns and they're already secured. This is the part earlier where I was saying if you do have a magnetic tip for your screwdriver, it'll allow these screws to stay on there while you're getting in like that vertical position. So another thing that I like to do before I actually crank them down is just go in if you can. If you, can, if you can't reach the ones, the hard to reach ones with the screwdriver, just go in and hand start them just to make sure that they're not any type of cross threaded or anything and that they're actually gonna go down nice and easy. And then once you've got that, come back through with the screwdriver and secure them. The next step is we're gonna go through and check out all of these different types of cables that are coming from the front panel and then we'll go ahead and install the power supply here in just a moment. So these cables are things such as like your HD audio, your USB 3.0, and then of course you've got like your power switch, reset switch, and your power LEDs, et cetera. So this is actually one of the smallest bundles I have ever seen when it comes to front panel cables. Usually you have like USB, a couple USB 2.0 headers, 3.0 headers, all of these different types of switch headers, all, that, all of that stuff. So this is actually really straightforward and really simple. I'm gonna like that. So what we're actually going to do is we're gonna go ahead and locate the ports on the other side of this board, and then we're gonna route the cables through all of these different entrances here that make sense and are closest to the headers on the actual uh, board, on the, on the motherboard over there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and spin this around. You will want to have your motherboard's manual handy just because you're gonna want to determine in which layout, like your power switch and your reset switch go. So you're gonna wanna have your manual on hand in order to see that. So we're gonna go ahead and flip the case around. But if we go ahead and find which cables are which, you can see this right here is the USB 3.0 header. I'm not typically a fan of this one just because this is a vertical, it just doesn't make sense. It should be like laying just like the SATA cable or the SATA ports are to where the cable just goes straight and then back. But this is gonna have, we're gonna have to have like 180 degree here, which is gonna probably put a little bit of pressure on this plastic casing. 
which typically isn't a, it's not obviously not a deal breaker, but it's not ideal. And it's kind of a cheap way of doing things in my opinion. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab one cable and kind of figure out, so this is the HD audio. And again, you're gonna want to determine which headers are what, and you can use your manual for this. So most of them are usually labeled. Uh, down here, it's hard to see probably by the camera, but right here in the back, this is where the HD audio header is going to be. So what I'm gonna want to do is I'm actually gonna run the cable. Whoop, we flip this around. There's a small port right here that I'm gonna run this HD audio cable through. I'm gonna run it right into here and keep that there. Uh, because I know that the USB 3.0 header is like right inside of here, I'm just gonna run this cable through here like so, we'll deal with that in just a moment. And then I know that the headers for the reset, reset switch and stuff are usually right in about in this area, so I'm just gonna run this cable right into about there. So we've got a, a general idea of where these cables are gonna go. So I'm gonna turn the case back around and then we'll, we'll deal with this one here in just a moment because we'll need the manual for that. But the HD audio, I already know where it goes. And if you take a look, a real close look, these are keyed and if you look on the board, you can see that they're only gonna really go on one way. So in this case, I've got an empty pin on the top side on the motherboard here and then I've got an empty pin. So this is gonna come around right there on that header. So it might be a little bit hard to see again, but it's, it's right here. That's all nice and plugged in. So that one's good to go. Uh, USB 3.0, again, there's a notch. It's keyed on the motherboard and on the cable itself. So we're gonna go ahead and match that notch. Fit that in just like that. I'll probably put something like a zip tie around that just to keep it from putting any type of pressure on the board, just because those plastic clips are really, really sensitive and can be really fragile. So that's in place. And only the last thing that we have here is our front panel. Now this one is, this board is really nice because again, it's gonna be hard to see just because everything on this board is dark, but it's already labeled on the board on where these actually go. So I actually don't need the manual for these ones because it's already marked on the board. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug these in. These all have like plus and minus and you'll want to route them accordingly. So those are in place. And before we end up like firing up this computer or before we end up buttoning everything up, we'll go over this at the end of the video, towards the end of the video, but we'll verify that those are working. And if they're not, then we'll come back in and, and readjust those. So. Now that we've got the front panel, you can see the front panels right here. We've got the USB 3.0s, power switch, reset switch, and we've got our audios. The next step of the process is we're going to install the power supply in here. And before we get this installed, you're gonna want to figure out on your case how the power supply is installed. In this case, it just goes in and then I can secure it from the back. But some of them, they have a plate you have to pull off and then mount it on the plate and then slide it in. Uh, but this one is just pretty normal. Uh, another thing to note is if your power supply sits underneath a shroud, a lot of them are shrouded just to kind of keep cable, ma uh, cable management. Uh, a lot of them are also covered underneath the shroud just to kind of hide any type of cable management or any wires. This case is pretty open, so this doesn't necessarily apply, but what you're gonna want to do, because when they're underneath the shroud, space can be very limited, you're gonna want to determine which cables you're going to need and plug them in beforehand if you are using a semi-modular or a modular power supply, you're gonna to wanna to plug them in beforehand because space gets really tight underneath the shroud. So if you don't have that, you don't have to worry about it. In this case, we don't have to worry about it because we have all of this open room that we're gonna route the cables through. Another thing is, is power supplies have a fan. The fan is typically an intake fan and it blows out the hot air out the back. So you're gonna to want to determine how you want to orient this thing in the case, depending on the type of filtration that you have in the case. I like to go with a good rule of thumb. If you have a vent or a filtration on the bottom, put the fan down and allow the, the power supply to get cooler air from the bottom of the case and then it will expel it out the back. Now, if you don't have any vent on the bottom, the answer is pretty clear. You will need to have your fan facing up and install it just like this. So we're gonna go through, because I am only using a single drive and also a single graphics card, I'll probably only need one of these and then I'll probably just put both of these in here just in case. Um, if you are working in a tight space and you do plan to expand later on, it might be beneficial for you to plug in maybe one extra cable if you have extra drives that you're planning on putting in or something. That way you don't have to rip out the power supply, put the new cable on and then install it back again. So that's just kind of a, a quick pro tip that I like to have on that. So we're gonna go through and we're going to install the power supply. So we're gonna go through and we're going to install the power supply. It's gonna sit just like this. We're gonna run these cables through the back, but what you want to do is if you are working in a tight space, plug those cables in and then you can kind of use those 
to help guide the power supply into its mounting position. So we're gonna take off the little wire right here and we're gonna take these out. So we've got, this is a semi-modular power supply. We've got, of course, our 24 pin power connector and then we've got an eight pin power connector here as well. Look, looks like on this board, that's all we're gonna need. We've got our 24 here, we've got an eight up here. Some boards will require like an additional four power. On my other board, I've got an additional four pin right there. So, but with this one, it's pretty simple. We're gonna just rest this in place. It does have rubber feet to help it keep any type of vibrations or sound down. And then we're actually just gonna route these out the back because we will bring these through the other ports as we need to. So if I run these out the back like that, I can run this out there with them as well. And we'll use, uh, of course, cable ties and uh, Velcro straps and stuff like that later on to do some cable management. So that's sitting in place right here, but to actually mount it, we're gonna slide the case like so. I think this has a bracket. So what we're actually gonna do is gently pull this back out. We'll let it, let it rest right about there. And you can see that we've got a screw there, typically each corner right there, right there, and right there. So what we're gonna want to do, perfect, okay. So we got that, so let's slide that back in. Make sure that it's resting in the position that it needs to, make sure these line up where they were supposed to, and we'll re-secure that, and voila. Okay, so the power supply is mounted. And let's reach back here and pull those cables back through. So we've got that mounted, and again, we've got the fan facing down. We'll go ahead and plug the cables for the drive in here in just a moment when we start installing the drives. And so, so far, you've installed your power supply and you're ready to move on. The next step now is we're going to install our solid state drive. And just like the power supply, it can be installed in various different methods. So depending on your case, you're gonna have a different location. Once again, in the case, it came with a bunch of screws and maybe even some rubber grommets. That is going to be used in this case because we're going to end up putting the rubber grommets on the drive and then sliding it into place. And then these are going to then slide into position. And with this case, obviously, you're gonna want to use the SATA cables which, whichever way they make sense. So if I reach over here and grab the SATA cables that came with the motherboard, you have usually a few different options. You can see right here, we've got a straight and we have a 90 degree. It wouldn't make sense for us to do a 90 degree like this because this is then just gonna have to wrap back down and it could cause pressure on it once we put the panel back on. So what we're actually gonna want to do is on the other side of the motherboard here, it doesn't look like we're gonna be able to use the 90 degree as well because then it's, it's not gonna work, it's gonna hit. So since we only have one drive on this, it looks like we're just gonna want to make, a, make use of both of these straight angles because it's just gonna make the most sense in this situation. Your case and your position of your motherboard and everything may be different. If you want to use the 90 degrees, obviously use those if it makes sense as far as like to make more of a cleaner look. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab some of these screws and it looks like you can see that they've got kind of like a, they've got threads and then there's no threads. Those are going to be used for the rubber grommet. So these are gonna go through just like that. And then those are going to mount onto the drive like so, just like that. So we're gonna install four of those and we're gonna want it to make sure that the contacts are facing this way because we're gonna plug in everything in from this side. And of course, be sure not to touch the gold contacts as much as you can, if at all. And then we're going to install the drive. Oh, you know what? I was wrong, these install a different way. So those install like this and then we slide it to the left, just like that. The straight cable, the straight edge cable. So, and you can see we have it right here. So. We know this is going to plug into the power supply, so I'm gonna route that cable in there. And then I'm just going to utilize the very end option as far as the SATA power. So it's unfortunate because this does have a 90 degree already on it. Sometime, I wish the cables would come out the back sometime. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a 90 degree on the cables and then the SATA power is also notched and keyed just like the SATA, uh, SATA cable itself. Just like that, okay. So that's not too bad, that'll work just fine. And then we can actually bring this cable around and allow it to kind of like rest really easily. Wrap this cable back in there. Again, we'll take care of the cable management 
towards the end. So we're gonna go ahead and slide this around. All right, and so since I know on this power supply, they are written down here where it says peripheral and SATA, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna keep thing, we're gonna plug it in on the bottom and then the rest of this can just route out the back like so. Um, and while we're here, let's go ahead and plug in the graphics card. Let me go and grab, and we'll grab the power supply cable for the graphics card or the PCI Express and do the same thing. This end will go in the mother or in the actual power supply. which will go on the bottom right next to the SATA and peripheral like we just plugged in. And then what we're actually going to do is we're gonna to have to reroute some of this a little bit, but for now I'm just gonna run this cable through the back. And then once we have the graphics card installed, we will bring that cable back through and install it in and plug it in. So for now, let's just run everything out the back there. Okay, so essentially we've got all of the power cables that we're going to need plugged into the actual power supply. We'll plug them into the board here in just a moment. But for now, since we just installed the drive, we are going to need to plug this in to the actual motherboard. So we're actually gonna run just about, just, just all the cable that we need through this port, just because I know, or is it this one? It's, it's actually gonna be this one right here, because I know that is closest to the SATA port. So if we grab this, so we've got the SATA cable right here, and you will want to pay attention because certain SATA ports are going to be controlled by like a third-party controller but it does look like this one is all going to be controlled by the main chipset. So you will want to determine which one you want to plug it into. This one looks like SATA 3, 1 and 2, and then SATA 3, 3 and 4, with depending on which one it's plugged into. But just for the sake of naming conventions, I'm just gonna go with the SATA 1, which I believe is going to be on the top side right here. And I'm just going to click that into place just like that. So if you have extra drives, you will want to plug those in to SATA 2, SATA 3, SATA 4. If you plan on using a M.2 drive instead of the standard solid state drive that you just saw me installed, one of those is gonna go right here. You can see where it says Ultra M.2 and then a second one can actually go down right here as well. So once you've got that drive in place, you then secure it down with a little screw right here. As you can see in this bag, that'll go in right there and it will mount the drive right there and you don't have to worry about these cables. So purpose of an M.2 is of course their newer technology. They're considerably quicker, especially if you get the uh, NVMe styles instead of just the SATA styles. But, and then you don't have to worry about running power cables or data cables because it's all done directly through the motherboard, which is pretty really cool. So now that we have the drive installed and we've got the proper power cables installed, let's run the power cables that we're going to need to power the motherboard through the necessary areas and get those plugged in. So the 24 pin we've got right here, as you can see, if you look real close, they are keyed as well. They can only typically go in one way. Just be very careful and just double check everything that it's being plugged in correctly and it sits and it seats nice and firm. So what we're gonna have to do here is we've got the edge or a clip edge right on the side of this motherboard or that side of that clip. And you can see that the clip is on this side. So we're actually gonna have to do another like 180 degree. That one's that you may hear a click when it clicks into place. If not, no big deal. Just make sure that it's nice and firm and it's not going to back out. It's gonna be a spot on the top right up here where I can run that cable through and then pull it from the other side. Then we're going to install that. Again, the clip side is up on this one, so we'll have to put the clip side up. So clip that into place. Now it's nice to see it and then pull any type of excess that you can through. So now we have the 24 pin and the four, or the 24 pin, the eight pin. We've got all of our necessary power cables plugged in and everything's ready to go. The next step from here I like to do is work with fans. I typically like to save the graphics card for last just because the graphics card is gonna sit kind of like front and center and it can get in the way of like certain headers. And the next step is installing your fans or if you're replacing fans with aftermarket, you're gonna want to determine where you want those fans to go. You usually have three different types of pressure methods that you can get within a case. First, if you have more, a positive pressure system will give you your intake fans are pushing more air into your case than your exhaust fans can expel. Of course, negative pressure is the opposite of that where your exhaust fans are actually pulling in more air than your intake fans can provide. And then of course, the ideal is a neutral to where your intake and your exhaust are pretty equivalent. I like to err on the side of caution and give just a little bit more positive pressure if I can just because if you have certain vents or certain cracks through the case, if you have a negative pressure system, you're gonna end up pulling in like extra dust and particles and you'll, your dust accumulation can just increase from that. So having a positive pressure ensures that those extra little holes in the case are actually blowing air out rather than sucking air in. So it's really up to you on how you want to do it. 
Of course, the ideal is getting that balance. As far as this case is concerned, because there's only one spot to mount a fan on the back here, there's no spot on the top, front, or even on the bottom. This could essentially either be a negative or possibly even a positive pressure depending on how you orient this back fan. Now, because there is only a single fan in this area, I would probably end up taking out the fan that came with this, with this case and replacing it with a higher performance fan and probably turning it around to position it as an intake fan rather than an exhaust fan to help kind of give me that pressure positive environment. The last step that we're gonna do for this case is to install the actual graphics card here. Now you'll notice that on your motherboard, your motherboard will probably have some type of clip mechanism just like you saw on the uh, RAM slots. So what you're gonna want to do is of course prepare the area by just moving those into the open or the upright position or the, the outside position and that will allow us to insert the actual graphics card. The next thing that you're gonna to want to do is turn the case to the side here. Depending on your case, you may need to some of these panels in order to get the graphics card in there. So what I like to do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove this first. You may have this slider, you may not. Sometimes you just have some thumb screws that you need to undo, but this one does slide and then remove out of the way. Now, as you can see here, these are usually fixed and you, what you'll need to do is take your screwdriver and insert them into the Phillips area and then just bend them and break them out of place. But before you do that, what I want you to do Grab your graphics card. And what I want you to do is, depending on how it orients, I want you to kind of put it inside the case and kind of like do it like a mock fit and find out which ones you're actually going to need to remove. Because just because you're putting it on the top PCI Express port doesn't mean you are going to need to remove the top one here. As you can see, after I plug it in and, and the, the shrouding and everything, the heat sink and everything, I'm actually going to be needing to remove the middle two right here in order for this graphics card to sit correctly. So, and then what I'm going to do, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and take the screwdriver here and I'm just gonna break these or just push them. Just like that. Once you've got that metal broken loose, you can then reach in. Be very careful you're not gonna end up like cutting yourself or end up scratching your motherboard because it's gonna hit. But most of the time it's usually pretty clear and it doesn't actually take much effort to break these things off. So as you can see, I've broken that off. And at this, at this point, these are trash. You can go ahead and throw those away. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the graphics card and if you have anything like, like any type of plastic film or anything like that, you will want to peel that off of the graphics card. And then of course, each graphics card will usually have some type of rubber sleeving that will protect the uh, PCI Express contacts, be sure not to touch those. But what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to line it up with your PCI Express port, which will look something similar to this. Make sure that that's still in the open position. And then what you're going to do is you're gonna line everything up just like this. And then you're gonna want to make sure back there in the corner that the metal bracket for your graphics card is in between the case and the motherboard and it's not pressing into your motherboard, motherboard, so be sure to pay attention to that. Once you've got it all lined up, you're gonna go ahead and hold it level and then just press firmly until you hear a click. Once you hear a click, just give it, I usually just push like one more time just to make sure it's nice and seated. And you can see that the PCI Express clip has moved into its resting position and it's holding the graphics card in place. Now, what you're gonna want to do for this case, what we had to do is we removed this little bracket. So we're gonna spin the case again, like so. We're gonna to want to hold this as level as we can, and then we're gonna slide this piece back onto it, just like that. Once we do that, we can then take the screw, and that goes just like that. Now, with this case, this does not prevent the case from, or this does not prevent the graphics card from drooping. All that does is prevent the graphics card from backing out. So what I'm gonna actually do is, now that we've got it in place, you can see right here, there's a couple little holes. I'm actually going to raise the graphics card a little bit and I'm gonna put two more screws right here and right here just to have a little extra level of, of stability for the graphics card. So like I said, what that will help with, it'll help with it, it preventing, it, most graphics cards are going to droop just because over time gravity takes a toll on them. You can get special brackets and stuff that will hold them up, but if you secure these right here, that'll at least give it a little bit more stability rather than if you don't. So as you can see, that is nice. And uh, that's nice and secure right there. That's all secure. But now what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want to plug in that power cable that we had earlier in the video and we're gonna route it through and plug it back in. So because down here is just a little bit full as far as power cables, I am going to bring it right through here. Fortunately, this cable is not long enough to leave that second half of power cables back behind the case. So what I'm gonna have to do is you'll notice that this is a six pin plus a two. 
So some cards will require them to be individual, some don't. What you'll have to do is put those together just like so. And then I have the, the clip on the top and the, the clip secure on the top on that side. So we'll then just plug it in like that. And that'll be secured right there. So this cable management was pretty straightforward. There wasn't a whole lot of cables that we needed to work with here. And it had actually a lot of space down in the corners to kind of tuck some of the cables down into, which is really nice. Now, of course, I did forget to mention earlier that you probably will want to have some snippers and some scissors around just so you can go through and you can clip the uh, remaining plastic off of these zip ties. But overall, that's kind of like your general idea of cable management. Now that we have everything put in the computer and everything's plugged in and ready to go, before we button it up and put the side panels on, we want to verify that it's going to turn on and do what I call a post. So what we're actually going to do is, of course, we're going to have everything plugged in. You're going to want to have your computer plugged in. But when you press the power button, one of two things, of course, is going to happen. First one being the best case scenario where it's actually going to turn on. If you have a screen connected, which I don't have a screen connected to this thing, it's going to give you some information. It's going to run through the BIOS and everything's going to be good to go. Just make sure that your drive is being checked. Or the second thing is, is nothing is going to happen when which two things that you can check on the computer to see what's going on. First and foremost, power switches or power supplies typically come with their power switch on the off position indicated by a zero and a one. So around the area that you plug in your power supply, check to verify that the one has been pushed and that is seated in the down position to turn the power supply on. The second thing that could happen if still nothing is that the power little the power cable that we installed on the actual motherboard could be reversed and you may need to go back and just turn that around or reposition it if you've got it on the correct pin. So those are just two things that you can check. On this case, if we go ahead and press the power button, you can see we've got the power light, everything's firing up, we've got the fans are spinning, graphics cards are spinning, um, everything's so far so good. Now if I did have a screen on this thing, it would be running through the, the BIO system to check to see, to make sure it's seeing, it's seeing the RAM, make sure that it's seeing the hard drive, or the solid state drive, etc. But so far everything is good to go and I am getting some solid state drive activity which probably tells me that it's finding it just fine. So in this case, this is a success. We've got everything plugged in correctly. So at this time, you can then go through, put everything back on, put the side pack panels back on and just button everything up. And that is it. You can now sit back, look at your hard work and enjoy the satisfaction of knowing that you have officially built your very own gaming PC. From here, you will need to go through, install a fresh copy of Windows or of course, a operating system of your choice. We will be creating a video on how to install a fresh copy of Windows. And when that is done, you can find that in the card in the top right hand corner of this video. And of course that wraps up today's video, bringing us into our question of the day. What type of platform did you go with, Intel or AMD? Leave your answers in the comment section below the video. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful or helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it on all of the social media platforms. We are a tech focused channel, so be sure to check out some of the other videos that we have. Here are a couple examples for you. Subscribe if you're not already and enable the bell notification so you guys don't miss out on any type of future content and we will see you on the next one.